Well, hello, Internet. I, uh, why am I here? Well, before I start, I figured the best time to do a video is when there's a jackhammer outside, people raking metal rakes on concrete, and talking really loudly at a construction site. What's more, what's more quality video and audio than that? Um, so, why am I here? Uh, what's today's video about? Well, I, uh, I did a bit of a week-long sprint for learning and I wanted to basically condense that down into something that's understandable for most audiences. And the topic I studied uh, this week was machine learning and the landscape around it. And I want to give some context before I jump into this. And there's a, there's a quote that I've repeated to myself consistently over the past couple of months, probably six or seven months, which is, uh, words and symbols, that's all they are, just words and symbols. And that doesn't make sense to you, but I'm going to explain. Uh, for the majority of my life, I've always seen a gap or a bridge between me and people I admire. And those people that I admire could potentially be working on nuclear fusion or working in space colonization or working on artificial general intelligence. All these big hard problems, these big interesting areas that these people are working in. And then there's always a separation between me and them because I always felt that they had something that I didn't, uh, something that they were more intelligent, they had better connections, all this stuff. I, I thought there was, a, there was a gap between me and them and I can never bridge that. And I think over the last year or so, that gap has begun to disappear because I've begun to disprove this myth that I've told myself for so long. Um, and I've written this post about machine learning with, with that in mind, where basically I'm hoping that I can convince you and whoever else comes across this post that these, these I guess, mythical things that we put these people on, these pedestals, where we state that they're smarter than us or they'll, they'll always be smarter than us, that's not the case because literally it's always just words and symbols. They, they know some terminology you don't understand, so all you have to do is understand the terminology. And the other thing is, is they maybe know some mathematical symbols that you've not come across, so they seem foreign to you, but once you understand what they mean, it's really not that hard. Um, so being able to kind of have this confidence in stating that I'm able to learn anything I want to as long as I'm dedicated to it is, is quite empowering. Um, so I hope this post helps. So. What, uh, what are we covering today? So we're covering machine learning. And uh, the, the approach I took here is to write a post and to summarize it in a way that my dad, who just got a smartphone like a month ago, um, my mom and my wife can all understand it, uh, at least at a high level. So what I'm doing is basically kind of imagine a flyby of a forest and the forest being machine learning, the landscape of it. And I basically want to do a high level overview of what it is how it works and the importance of it. And this video, I'm just going to basically explain an overview of the overview in the post, and I'll touch on a few things that I think might be interesting for you to hear about. So, how's the post structured? So, the post that I've written is it's um, I break it into a, uh, a couple segments. So, first, I take a step back and I talk about the difference between um, the the two words of models and algorithms because. When you look into the space, you start to realize that a lot of people use these interchangeably. And once you understand the difference between the two, then you kind of, it makes your journey of learning this topic a lot easier. And in a nutshell, um, basically, you'll see in the post is more depth and detail, but the difference between the two is basically models are born from algorithms and algorithms create models. Um, I use an analogy of an vending machine in the post to really kind of bring it home. And the next piece is the goals of machine learning. So what are the main goals of machine learning? Why does it exist? I summarized it and I know there's more than just two, but I, I kind of bundled it in just to two things so my mom, dad, and wife could understand it. And when I say that, it's just a kind of a, a correlation to someone that doesn't necessarily have the technical mathematical understanding. So I try to avoid any and all jargon, any and all formulas. I try to kind of make it as intuitive as possible so someone can pick it up and understand it. So the two goals of machine learning, which are predicting and classifying. Uh, the next piece is the three ways we get to those two goals. So what are the three methods you can achieve those two goals that we've laid out? And those three methods that I speak about are supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. And 
briefly I'll explain what they are. Supervised is you basically have a godlike figure that's supervising you as you, the robot or the agent, are working on this, um, are, are learning. So you basically have an answer key that you can check against as you're learning. Unsupervised is you have no answer key, you have no god figure watching you, um, you basically just get thrown a bunch of information and you have to figure out what's the importance of this information, are there any patterns and features inside of this that are relevant. And then reinforcement is kind of like a beast on its own, um, which I do want to do a separate post on, but in a nutshell it's basically life that we're living right now. Um, an agent or a robot gets dropped in the middle of nowhere and you basically have to say, figure it out. And they have to figure it out based off of their environment. So. Um, they get rewards and punishments for whatever they do, and those rewards and punishments shape their actions for the future. And that's basically like life, right? So you, we, we as humans, we evolve based off of our environment. We basically behave in certain ways in relationship to the things that are happening outside of us. So those are the three ways to achieve the two goals. And then I jump into applications. So I do speak about applications throughout the post, so it, I can you can have examples and it kind of makes more sense and there's tons and tons of links throughout as well but this piece right here is I want to talk about three different applications that I thought were really interesting and, and would be quite inspiring to people. Um, one I'll mention now is Google's DeepMind which is kind of a subset of Google and what they've done is they've actually a few years back reduced Google's data center's cooling bill by 40 percent now what we saw was pretty exciting because when our machine learning controls went on, there was a very clear dip in the amount of energy that the facility was consuming. And then when they went off, energy consumption went back up. And they actually reduced their power usage by 15%. And this sounds, this sounds interesting, yeah, that's amazing. Um, but this actually has a pretty big impact on climate and it's pretty important, especially that I'm not sure what the numbers are, but I know there's a massive impact on the amount of electricity that needs to cool and run these data centers that's being pulled from these energy plants that aren't necessarily the most renewable and the most environmentally friendly. So I think that's, that's quite interesting. Um, and the way they did it is quite amazing because they basically took this robot and this agent, um, trained it up a bit, kind of had it have guardrails and people assist it and stuff, but eventually it got to the point where this, this, um, this machine learning algorithm was, or multiple of them, were basically um, running the data center on its, uh, by itself autonomously because when humans intervene, like would interject, it would actually hurt the quality of the algorithm. So they just let it run by itself and it saved tons and tons of energy and money. And there are a few other applications they talk about in health and uh, other areas, so check that out. Um, Another thing is resources. So like I said, there's tons of resources throughout, but what I did at the end is I actually specifically wanted to point out a few resources that were some of my favorites that I've been kind of, I've stumbled across over the last year, year and a half um, in the space of AI and machine learning. Uh, three I'll mention now, which are I think quite interesting. And the thing is with these, with these resources I've provided, I've tried to bucket them into different segments where there's like education resources, there's resources that keep you up to date on the industry, and then there's also kind of uh, general resources to see what it's like to work in the space or kind of existential risk things. So the three I'll mention here, one is Crash Course AI. The term artificial intelligence didn't even exist a century ago. It was coined in 1956 by a computer scientist named John McCarthy. And anything Crash Course, I'm a fan of. I love all Crash Course stuff, but the animation is amazing, the explanations are great, and um, you should check it out. The next is Wait But Why. So Tim Urban wrote a series of blog posts that were actually really, really good that talked not about the technical side of AI, but also, but more he talked about the implications of it and how we will live next to it and how it could impact our lives going forward and take in like a ton of stuff, uh, most of which alone should not probably be trusted. But eventually, <laughs> by the time you kind of get to the end, you're like, okay, I at least have a sense of what people are saying. Um, and with AI, there's not really any definitive source anyway. Um, and the last is Lex Friedman's podcast. So he does long form interviews and he speaks with a variety of people. And uh, I'll show a clip here of Elon with him speaking with Elon for a few seconds. Let's start with an easy question about consciousness. In your view, is consciousness something that's unique to humans, or is it something that 
permeates all matter, almost like a fundamental force of physics. But I definitely recommend you check him out. And lastly, so this, that, that's it. So that's the post. Those are the lessons learned, the reason why I did it. Um, but I want you to uh, hopefully get something from this. Uh, if it's not the topic and the content itself, it's the knowing that you're able to go out there and learn things that you want to learn. And uh, another interesting thing that I wanted to bring up to you was um, if you have any topics you're interested in me pursuing, um, share them in the comments, let me know, uh, message me, whatever you want to do, um, because I'm going to continue this journey and I'm going to continue learning on a weekly basis and I'm going to share those learnings with you. Uh, the topics are going to be broad and they're going to be wide, so it's not going to just be deep tech, it's not just going to be industry focuses, it's going to be a variety of things. Um, so yeah, and if, uh, if you want, I have a newsletter that I've newly created, and it's just going to be basically five interesting things I've come across throughout the week. It could be movies, books, podcasts, it could be objects, it could be experiences, photos, whatever it is. It's a variety of things. So if you want to, you can subscribe. I'll put a link in somewhere in this area. Um, and yeah, I hope that was helpful. And internet, I will see you next week when we do a topic that I'll choose hopefully today or tomorrow.